You've heard of the Incredible Hulk, but tonight we're going to introduce you to the Incredible Tulk. He appears to be capable of superhuman feats of strength. How does he do it? Just watch. October 2017. It's a seemingly typical day in Luton, England. A nearby security camera is recording as a determined man approaches a small blue car parked on the street. He reaches under the front bumper and after a few seconds proceeds to not only lift the vehicle up, but actually push it backwards. Look again. The car is parked, but he's able to push it out of the way in his bare feet. The man performing this incredible feat of strength is Hakan Akar, AKA the Incredible Tulk. I couldn't go anywhere because someone blocked my driveway. So my full process was I'm gonna to go to the car, I'm gonna see how heavy it is, decided to lift it. I started just pushing and pushing and pushing until the uh, car was actually veering off into the road. Hakan isn't the only modern day Hercules caught on camera treating a car like a children's toy. This video from Russia in 2016 shows a man overpowering this vehicle's acceleration. So how are these guys doing this? Some have speculated that there might be a genetic mutation behind super strength. There's a protein called myostatin, which typically inhibits the growth of muscles. But if you have this condition that limits myostatin, your muscles will actually grow bigger. Artificial substances can also be involved pushing the limits of human strength. Steroids are the modern method, of course, but the practice goes back ages. We know that warriors in South America from Aztec and, and Mayan cultures would often ingest plants that contained what we would sort of call narcotics today for the purpose of getting ready for combat. Mescaline, which naturally occurs in cacti, such as peyote, were common sources of such drugs. It reduces fear, but it also opens up blood vessels. It opens up how much oxygen the body can take in. Hakan assures us that's not what's giving him his strength. I've never took anything in my life. I've always been naturally quite strong. And then once I started actually going to the gym and training, I realized that my strength levels were quite high. So Hakan's superior strength really is the result of nature and regular trips to the gym. But is his ability to move an entire car as impressive as it looks to the rest of us? Or is there something else at work here? Let's have our experts do the heavy lifting. Dr. Hakim Olushehi says Hakan's physical strength is part of the equation, but he is also getting a big assist from an age-old scientific principle. We know cars are heavy, on average around 3,000 pounds, but he's using one of the six simple machines, and that is the lever. The front tires are where the fulcrum is located, and he's basically just lifting it off the ground a little bit, one end of it, and that's very different than just picking up a car and lifting it above your head. Hakan has essentially turned the car into one big resistance arm that redistributes its own weight toward the back wheels, similar to how you can move a bunch of heavy rocks in a wheelbarrow. Professor Michio Kaku also says it's not the muscles you may think that are at work here. We're not talking about upper body muscular strength. We're talking about his feet helping to push the car, and the car in turn is designed to minimize friction in the horizontal direction. That explains why those bare feet seem to help as well. My uh, Crocs ended up getting flung off at the same time. I thought I'd get a bit more traction with my feet. Hakan built up a greater coefficient of friction with the road, allowing for even more horizontal force. And as for the guy in Russia battling the accelerating car? Look at the wheels. He's lifted the car off the ground, so that most of the energy of the gasoline is being used to simply spin wheels. Because this is a front-wheel drive vehicle, the back tires on the ground aren't powered by the accelerator. He appears to be able to take a car's forward motion and stop it when actually that energy is being wasted. Our verdict? A blend of strength and proportional mass. There's no doubt that Hakan has above average strength, but a variety of outside conditions are making the incredible Tulk's astounding feat slightly easier than it looks. May 2021, Canadian resident Rob connects with Chris from Utah on a video chat. The two met on a Facebook group that explores the idea of possible extrasensory powers. Chris claims to have one particularly shocking ability. There you go. 
With a piece of foil on one finger, Chris holds up a light bulb and presses the end, and suddenly is able to make it light up without any wires. Turn it all around everywhere so people can see there's nothing anywhere. Perfect. The two got together to talk to us. I was skeptical. I got him to take his camera and show it all around because I was wondering if there was some kind of a static generator or a Tesla coil, but there wasn't. Chris says this extraordinary ability was taught to him by a man in South America who honed this power through years of meditation. We're like a capacitor or a battery. That's what my teacher taught me. All I'm doing is I'm gathering an abundance of negative ions from the atmosphere and charging my body with it. So I create a voltage differential. And so what you're seeing most of it is static discharge. Now, does that hurt, Chris? Oh, it, um, it drains. It's physical exercises like moving his muscles in a certain way, breathing a certain way, and it creates a charge. It pulls negative ions out of the air. So the negative ions in his body are going through the bulb, lighting it up, and then they pass on their way to ground and discharge to the ground. You know, it's really just about physics. Now, the average human produces about 100 watts of electricity at rest, but we generally lack the ability to focus that energy into a consistent current. So how is Chris able to do this? Let's ask the experts. So, of course, our first question, is this just a clever trick? Mick West thinks the answer is yes. He's actually got a little bit of foil on the end of one finger. If you look at a regular light bulb, you see it's got one contact in the middle and then the other contact where the screws are. And electricity normally flows across those. But if you stick a battery and a small bulb inside the light bulb, you can actually create a trick light bulb that will light up when touching a bit of aluminum foil to the two contacts. And I think that's all that's going on here. But maybe that's not how the trick's done. Wow. Dr. Hakim Olushehi says it may be possible he's not collecting ions from the air, but that he's conducting the electricity coming from somewhere else. Our bodies are 50% water, and the water in our bodies is a pretty good conductor of electricity. The body can hold a voltage if he's directly connected to a source of power, and he can transfer that voltage to the bulb, causing it to illuminate. It's not out of the question, then, that Chris is hoaxing us by hooking himself up to a low-voltage current. Contact, yeah. But even a small sustained amount could have damaging effects. A current going through your body, particularly if it goes through the heart, it'll upset the heart's rhythms. So the first question may be, how are they surviving this? Ow! When we talked to Chris and Rob, they insisted no wires or trick bulbs were involved, and even demonstrated this power in a new way. Let me hold your hand, okay? And I'm gonna take the ball, but I'm gonna to touch it to the ground of the table. There it is. There we go. If you look around the table, there's nothing attached to the table. There's nothing attached to Chris. It's not a trick light bulb. I can't make it go on by touching it. No way, no how. But if I grab his hand, then I can do it. <laughs> Our experts were pretty convinced this was a hoax, but even though we weren't with Chris and Rob in person, their demonstration was pretty convincing. Since we can't explain how he's doing it, we're going to call this an unexplained trick. In July of 2017 in Zhuhai, China, it's a typical day as a motorist drives through a quiet parking lot. There's nothing to indicate that a potentially deadly tragedy is seconds away. Watch close on the right of the security footage as the car seems to hit a bump. And suddenly, we see a child emerge from under its wheel. The car stops, but incredibly, the child seems to walk away unharmed. A similar miraculous video emerged from Nanjing, China in 2016, and yet another in Mumbai, India in 2018.
Author Alexis Brooks says there have been actual documented cases of humans born with nearly indestructible bones, including a man in 1994 who walked away from a near-fatal car crash virtually unharmed. The x-rays showed that he had negligible injuries, and the doctors, of course, scratched their head. They discovered that he had a very rare uh, bone mutation. His bone density was actually eight times more dense than the average human beings. When the doctors told the man of what they found, he said, that doesn't surprise me at all. It's no wonder I've never been able to stay afloat when I try to swim. Researchers at the Yale Bone Center later discovered the man wasn't the only one with these near indestructible bones. Do these kids have the same condition? There are a few open questions here. First, are these videos real or hoaxes? And if they are real, how did these kids survive? Let's turn to our experts. Video forensic expert Michael Primo runs tests on the video from Juhai, comparing it to what another camera recorded from an overhead angle. From these two different perspectives, uh, there is a consistency between how the vehicle travels from its passenger front side tire and its passenger rear side tire as it travels over uh, the subject. Would that be difficult to manufacture the vehicle's movements over the subject? Yes. So we're going to say this video is real, but physics professor Michio Kaku says in a small, almost miraculous number of cases, it may not require superhuman bones for children to walk away. We think of the kid as like a small adult. So you realize that the laws of physics apply differently to the child. The child has a much smaller height off the ground. This car goes over the child very quickly, minimizing the energy transfer to the child, while an adult would have sustained maximum damage. Dr. Kaku explains this in terms most drivers can understand. When a car goes over a twig, the twig hardly notices at all. Doesn't necessarily break because the time of impact is so tiny and the energy transfer to the twig is almost minimal. But think of a car going over a log. The log is much taller than the twig and thus creates much more sudden vertical force between the car and the log. The energy transfer is much greater. There's much more damage. So, our verdict. The videos are real, and these children were likely spared by physics and tremendous good fortune. However, the vast majority of children in this situation would not survive. So always, always drive carefully and keep your kids out of traffic. It's August 2011 in West Allis, Wisconsin. Dozens of people are watching a seemingly unassuming acrobat flip over some of those gathered to watch, and his grand finale is eye-popping. Watch that again in slow motion. The stuntman runs full speed towards an oncoming black sports car. Just as it seems he will be hit, he takes a flying leap and flips right over it cleanly. And he's not the only one who appears to be pulling off such a potentially deadly stunt. In November 2020, a Michigan man was filmed flipping over a red sports car accelerating towards him. In another viral video, a British gymnast backflips over a speeding Formula One race car like it's nothing. These situations would end in disaster for most humans. Here's a memorable fail. Makes you wonder if this isn't another CGI prank like we've seen before. You may remember the guy dodging traffic in Colombia. And if it's not a hoax, exactly how are these men pulling this off? There is this ability in some individuals to shift the rules of reality or the physics of oneself. There have been yogis who, while in the process of deep prayer, were seen floating, literally levitating above the ground. However, some of those claims of levitation, like that of Yogi Sabaya Polivar, supposedly observed by 150 people in 1936, turned out to be a clever hoax involving a concealed pole. So are these modern displays of gravity defiance also fakes or the real deal? The current Guinness World Record for a standing vertical leap is 67 inches, and that's without a flip and a car careening towards someone. So is this really possible? And what to make of those failed attempts? Whoa, we asked the experts. 
First, Mick West looks for signs any of these videos were faked. Check out this example. Here the effect was achieved by combining a shot of the flip and one of a driving car taken later, but the Wisconsin flipper is different. There's nothing that leaps out to me as being a particularly fake video. We see his reflection in the windscreen when he jumps over it. Here. We see the reaction of the crowd. The shadows also line up in this video from the parking lot, but the video on the racetrack raises a flag. You'll see right here, there's a large chunk of the rear spoiler missing. And not only just in that frame, but in, in other frames as well. There's a chunk missing right here. He's obviously very capable of doing backflips. I think they've taken two shots identically with the camera perhaps synchronized and composited them together. And they've unfortunately not done a perfect job of it. As for the other two videos, Professor Michio Kaku says these stunts are certainly possible for certain humans with the right physical traits. The key physical characteristics that these people have to have is coordination of their lower body weight. You want to be able to have strong leg muscles. It's the vertical lift from a dead stop that allows you to perform these gyrations in the air. You can think of it like a spring. The amount of force that a spring exerts is directly correlated to how far you push the spring down and then how far the spring then expands back up. It's the same with muscles. It also requires a certain mental acuity. You have to overcome the tendency to tense up as the car is coming at you. You want to approach it in a loosened and relaxed state. You want your muscles to start out maximally lengthened so that you get the most force that you possibly can out of that contraction. The single most important characteristic that you have to master is timing. If you take off too late, the car hits you. You take off too early, you land on top of the car. So, our verdict, these stunts can be faked, as in the case of the racetrack video. But there are certainly people out there capable of leaping over a moving car. In the authentic videos, the talented stuntmen got lucky with the timing. But it could have still ended badly, so don't go trying this at home.